hello and welcome to the Listening Post's unboxing channel on YouTube. Today I'm unboxing a brand new subwoofer from SVS, their PB1000. This ported box subwoofer it features a 10 inch driver and is astonishing value for money. This is an amazing sub and has a reputation that is well deserved in its price. Genuinely, really, really cheap for its performance. And, to be honest, it's, it's monstering everybody else's subwoofers in the market. Let's have a quick look then. So, SVS, very plain packaging. Uh, we've got a model information on the top, a bit of information about how to unbox it. And on one side, we've got a uh, scan code for model and serial number. This is kind of standard, and hopefully you've seen some of our other unboxings of some of the other SVSs where we did the uh, SB1000 in a couple of colours so that people could see them. This should be in a standard uh, black finish, so without further ado, let's have a quick look. Now, SVS subwoofers are heavy. In fact, look, generally subwoofers are. Um, this is one of the first, though, that sort of says, hey, look, be a little bit more careful. Um, lift the box off the product, not the product out of the box. And you'll see, as I open up the inside, that it's pretty plain and muted uh, for the next layer. It's actually a second shipping box. Um, look, I think I'll take this outer one off, just so we can have a quick look. Now, they make a good seal, so if you're after a quick, a quick way of getting these boxes off, um, slice the bottom, and it will let a little bit of air in, and then you can lift more freely the the outer box off the inner one because obviously the, the packaging is designed to be as snug as possible otherwise it's not going to do its job to protect you there we go right so obviously now we're looking at the bottom of the product and to be honest this is probably how I'm going to continue with um, these products they're commonly actually opened by the distributor and power cords put on. And we typically see that the accessories are in the bottom of the box. So I'm going to work with that and we're going to see this product from the bottom. Okay. So a bit, a bit of protection. This is actually excellently protected. And again, as I predicted, the accessories are in the bottom. This has had a little bit of a, an incident in freight and some of the polystyrene has clearly been bashed around. But the product itself looks fine. You'll see in the bottom a basic figure eight power cord. Uh, this is a New Zealand power cord, okay, and a bag, and a second bag with the basic uh, setup guides, plug-in, all those types of things. Very, very straightforward. And of course, the packaging. I'm just going to fish around and get rid of the polystyrene that, as I said, sort of took a little bit of a knock and some freight, and that's not unusual. Um, it seems that manufacturers do a wonderful job of protecting their products and then carriers do a wonderful job of trying to beat them up. So, at this point, I'm going to give the bag a little bit of a nick. And then we're going to carefully roll it over. This is a very straightforward way of unboxing a something. Just letting it roll onto the carpet and not getting too fussed about it trying to deal with the bag, etc. Right, so, obviously a big oversized bag, and both the top and the bottom are protected with a piece of that sort of poly paper, or whatever they call it. It's that sort of final protection to ensure that as these things rattle around in boxes, they end up arriving to you in one piece. It's worthwhile mentioning that off to one side, as we've unpacked it, is a big desiccant bag. Um, this of course means that it's going to stay dry in transit, sea freight and other things like that, you know, you never really know. But it's good that they're protecting it inside the bag with one of these. There's even a soft cloth over it so that if it rubs on the product it's actually not going to do any damage. Okay, so looking at the subwoofer. Obviously here's the side of it, it's not very deep, although it's deeper than some, but it needs to be. You need a little bit of cubic area inside, a little bit of volume physically to ensure that the driver can breathe properly. Um, at the rear, I think we're going to start there. 
What we've got is a very simple back panel that you expect. In fact, this is the same as you will see on the back of the uh, SB1000. Um, you've got a figure eight power input, a simple rocker switch for on and off. Working along from there, you've got speaker level in. This is ideal if you want to drop tap or allow both uh, this, the speaker cable into this so that the signal from the amplifier is the same going to the speakers. Above it is a very easy to uh, utilize and obviously line up all the plugs and sockets an in and out for audio. So there's one here marked clearly as an LFE if this is to be used in a home theatre mode but it allows both a stereo input and a stereo output if you want to run this through an integrated amplifier for the purposes of music. Um, above that we have a trigger. Now that's a 3 to 12 volt trigger forcing the unit to go into standby uh, rather than waiting for the signal sense to turn it off for you. Above it is of course a little rocker switch about its um, auto standby settings. You've got auto or always on. Above this we have the low pass filter. Now any subwoofer is going to automatically try and do the very lowest frequency it can. What you're doing with this is setting its highest frequency. If in combination with a theater amplifier and LFE, you should probably run this all the way up, uh, bypassing any filter on board, so that the, the, the theater amplifier can deliver the crossover it requires to deliver the LFE and any bleeding from the front speakers accurately as well. Although it does give us the ability to wind it all the way up to 50 hertz and all the way uh, down to maybe 180. Now, the uh, phase is the next nut dial up, and this is again a critical element of why SVS subwoofers are so popular. Instead of like many where they have a, a, an in or out of phase switch, this is infinitely variable from 0 to 180 degrees. You can't always place a subwoofer perfectly in a room, and this variable phase enables us to tune the subwoofer's performance and time alignment, for want of a better, better term, for the front speakers, or if the subwoofer is off to one side or perhaps halfway down a wall, you can you can ensure that it works perfectly as far as its uh, performance for its location. Of course, the top knob is the volume, and this is probably the most fun. Let's be honest, uh, everybody winds it up for those action movies, turns it down when you're told to by other people's in the home, but realistically, having an, a prestigious amount of bass in a home theatre is not only entertaining, but Let's be honest, it can add a little bit of wow factor to a home theatre's performance. And being able to vary it on the fly with a very quick, easy to use volume control is an important element of a subwoofer nowadays. Now briefly I'm going to show you the bottom. With anything that's rattling around and moving so much air, having good feet is important. You will see these are sort of a rubberized um, pin or peg. They sort of nestle into the carpet really well and do a very, very good job of pinning the subwoofer into place. Should you use this onto a hardwood or a tiled floor, it's not going to cause any damage either. As these aren't sharp, they're a rubberized foot. Looking again at the side and the cabinet it's curved, this helps to have very rigid cabinetry and also helps internally to, to deal with some of the standing waves associated with a subwoofer. Okay. Now looking at the front. Again, very straightforward and classic design from SVS. Just a simple logo, centre low down on the front grille. We sort of pry that off. These grills are beautifully made and have very, very hard uh, rubber uh, sockets for the little pegs to go into. The grill on this one appears to be made of MDF, although I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if it's actually a plastic material of some kind. I've seen these sort of composite materials being used in subwoofer grills before, and I would expect, given how rigid this is, it probably is. The grill itself is quite large and acoustically transparent, which, of course, they need to be. There's a subtle scallop off to one side, delineating immediately it lining up with the port at the front. And again, hang around for some photographs, and I'll take some close-ups of these so you can see. Now. Back to the basics and the business end of any subwoofer, it's the drive unit and its port. SVS do a range of sealed boxes and ported boxes delineated by SB and PB. This of course being the PB1000 has a port and 
To ensure that this, the subwoofer doesn't end up massively large, they've opted for a 10-inch driver rather than uh, the 12s that are available in some of the sealed boxes. The driver itself is extremely rigid and very fast moving as far as all of the uh, performance you would expect. Good sized magnet, good sized voice coil in behind it means the engine behind the subwoofer is done very very well. It's uh, reinforced so there's no issues as far as uh, damage or something I guess and the annulus is again very rugged as you would expect. The port is very large and disappears deep inside the subwoofer. It allows the subwoofer to be tuned very well for its performance and should at no point create any port chuffing, uh, which of course is a negative thing in, a, in any subwoofer. Above the drive unit is the tri-color LED. This changes color according to whether or not it's in standby, actively working or of course off. Very, very straightforward. It is all that it needs to be. You want to know if it's on, you want to know if it should be making some noise, and with a subwoofer like this you will know it is going. Okay, so there we go. This SVS a PB1000 ported 10 inch subwoofer unboxed here at the listening post in Christchurch, New Zealand. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe to our channel.